uh, what is their book about? Who are they trying to reach? Who are their ideal readers? Because like I also mentioned to you, I have authors who, you know, I want to be on all the literary podcasts and I go, but it's a beach read. So are all of the authors that are listening to these podcasts wanting to read the beach read? No, let's reach the people who read the beach reads. So, you know, who, who is it you want to target? Uh, how did you come up with the book? What is it in your life? This is my favorite question to ask a, a novelist is what in your real life did you put in the book? that you can share with us. I want to know what's real and what's, you know, not, and that, at least to the point where you can share that. But, you know, when you get to know an author and whether that's through an interview or off on the side, when I'm doing a one-on-one, -on -one, you get to know their personality. And I have one, uh, you know, Mary Carol Moore. I think you've interviewed her. So having worked with Mary now on her second book launch, I've gotten to know her life's journey. And so in her second book that, that's coming out soon, I was like, oh, you wrote this part about this character being an artist because you're an artist. Oh, you did this and you went diving here. And that's why this the book takes place here. And so you get to know right away what's fact versus what's fiction when you get to hear from these authors. So I ask these questions up front because otherwise, you know, you, you really need to get to know them to figure that one out. But that's what podcast interviews let us do. So I do ask those kinds of questions from clients of, you know, what, what is it or what's your goal in writing these books? You know, is this your career or is this something that you're doing on the side? Just as you asked me, you know, what, what's the, the purpose of having this book out there? What do I want it to come from it? So those are the types of questions that I ask them. Hey everyone, welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. I have an expert on the podcast today who not only has a book, as a podcast. She has an audiobook, which I'm totally in love with, and she can help me get on podcast. Kind of surreal. She's here to talk about how to get on podcast, and we're doing a podcast. So it works. I can tell you that much. It works because Michelle's here. <laughs> Michelle Glogovac is on the podcast. We're going to go through her book, her journey, and we've had the pleasure of working together through email, getting people on this show through Michelle and all of her great authors she represents. Welcome, Michelle, to Living the Next Chapter. Thank you so much. It's very full circle. Right. Uh, and, and you can be the testament that what I do works <laughs> because it does. you book those authors. So I appreciate You've that. sent me so many great people to talk to, and I really appreciate it. To, as a podcaster, to make a connection with a podcast guesting group, a service, a person like yourself that sends quality people to us who just know the show or know the style of the show. You send great people. Thank so you. When I see those emails pop up, it's like a not even a question. It's like, sure. Just I love that. You that know. That's our goal too. Yeah. If, right. if we can get that Rolodex going where you trust us uh, and we obviously trust you, then it's the mutually beneficial transaction that we're all looking for. That isn't really a transaction. It becomes a relationship. Yeah. So we'll cover a lot of stuff. Um, tell everybody about your business first. Let's start with that before we jump into talking about the book. Um, but uh, I would love to kind of give you the platform to talk about what you do, who you help, because we represent a lot of authors that come on the show looking for people exactly like you to help them or new authors writing their book and they haven't even thought about the promotional side of getting out there in front of people and what it's like to work with, pe with people like you. I would love for you to sell, sell, sell. Come on, tell everybody about what you do and your website, all that great stuff. Well, uh, well I'm not going to sell, sell, sell because that goes against what I say that podcasts are all about. <laughs> so I'm going to teach, okay. teach, teach instead. I love it. Oh, okay, uh, let's do that. That's but cool. I, I will share. So I am uh, Michelle Glogovac and my company is the MLG Collective. It is a boutique podcast PR agency. And so we do PR, but only when it comes to podcasts. We help clients with their brand, with their unique speaking topics, and we pitch them to podcasts that want to hear from them. We don't pitch their book, per se. We don't pitch their product or service. We pitch the person because the interview is with the person, not with whatever they're trying to sell. So clients come to me. I work with authors, nonprofits, entrepreneurs, really anyone and everyone almost. They have to be the right fit, right? But when it comes to authors, we work together where I read your entire book, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, I read it cover to cover because I want to get to know you, whether it's your characters, I want to get to know your subject matter. 
And then I stalk you. I like to say that I am a stalker at heart. That is what I do. I am going to Google you, find out everything there is to know about you, things that are on the internet that you might not even know are out there about you. And then we come together and we have a one-on-one Zoom where I ask you questions. You share your life story with me, the pivots, your career journey, how you wrote your book, where you came up with the idea. And I ask you the questions that I've come up with along the way. And from that, I create six unique speaking topics. And in my book, How to Get on Podcasts, I detail what the categories are for each of these topics and what questions you can ask yourself in order to create those speaking topics. From there, I create a branded media kit. And for all of the authors who are writing but haven't built their brand yet, this is the important part because you need to get yourself out there. You need to build an audience so that when it is time for your book to be published and you want to sell it, you already have a built-in audience that wants to buy from you because they've gotten to know you. And so to be pitched on podcasts and interviewed on podcasts, it allows listeners to get to know you, to fall in love with you, to want to follow you, sign up for your newsletter, and then ultimately purchase your book when it comes out. Or if it's already out, to go purchase a book because a sale is a sale no matter when it happens. So yeah. that's the timing isn't really of the big concern, although, as you know, pre-sales always help. So we'll start before a book comes out, but while it comes out and even years after it's come out. So you're out there digging through and stalking your potential clients to get on podcasts. Are you doing the same thing to us podcast hosts? Are Certainly. you doing that to us too? Absolutely. Oh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> we are listening to the shows. We look at the social media followings. We look at the engagement. We look at websites uh, because we also, every uh, pitch that goes out is unique to the host. I've seen other agencies say, well, they're unique to the guest. And that means that they're copy and pasted for every single host. True. That is not the case with my company. We pitch to the host and we relate to an episode specifically and not the most recent one because we feel that's lazy. We dive and we go deep into what what can we relate to, whether it's on behalf of the client or ourselves, because we're listening to say, I loved when you had this author on, this is why it resonated with me. This is what I learned from it. So you know that in all honesty, we did listen and we we truly are connecting with you. And then we share what knowledge and education our client's going to bring to your listening audience, because we don't want it to be a sales pitch. It yeah. should be an opportunity to get to know this other person. And then we'll present you with some of their topics, not all of them. That's attached in the media kit that we've created. But the the topics that we feel are the ones that would are the best fit for your show. And you can say, no, I want one of the other ones or talk about something else completely. It's totally up to you. And then we also make sure that everything is hyperlinked so you don't have to do any homework. You can click on it and get there, but you don't have to go Google them the way that we've just Googled you and we've yeah. Googled the client. Uh, And then we make sure that after the interview has gone live, that we provide the client with everything they need to repurpose. And in my book, I refer to this whole entire process to a dinner party where the client is the podcast guest who has been invited to your home, which is your show. And they are the dinner party guest who needs to show up and engage. They bring something with them, like the bottle of wine or the flowers. Instead, we're bringing a freebie, you know, whether it's the first chapter or book club questions or something like that. And then when they leave, they have to say thank you. And so Mm -hmm. a dinner party, you would send a text or you send the pictures or you send a, a handwritten card. And when it comes to a podcast, you repurpose it, you post about it. Not for 24 hours in your Instagram stories, but a real post that lives forever. You put it on your website as a blog post. You create a Spotify playlist and you add it there. You share it and you tag the host everywhere to show your appreciation because it's also going to ensure that there's value and an ROI because everyone wants to know what's the return on the investment. Well, if you're sharing it, it's reaching more people who now will be listening to the show your audience is going to be seeing these posts as well. They'll go listen to the show. So it just perpetuates the ripple effect of the pond. I love it. Oh, and I'm glad you said ripple effect. That is good. I, that means a lot to me to hear you say that. I just had somebody on today that talked about causing a ripple with their podcast and with what they're doing. So you just 
tie without even knowing you tied a nice <laughs> bow on my conversations from earlier today. So well done. Um, you you said create a Spotify playlist, mm -hmm. and I watched your your video about that and went. Oh, we got to talk about that. That is a great <laughs> idea. Can you unpack that? I'll have a link so people can hear the entire thing. Yes. Uh, but can you kind of summarize that for us? Like, what are you talking about there? Yes. So Spotify, you can listen, you know, to your music. You can listen to podcasts, all of that. So what I do is I create a, um, a not a post, but a graphic in Canva. And it can yep. be the size of an Instagram post, so just a square. And I make sure that the headshot of the client is there, their name, put the book cover on it, and then you go to Spotify and you click on create a playlist. You upload your own graphic that you've just created. You title it podcast interviews with Michelle Glogovac. You put the description, listen to podcast interviews with Michelle Glogovac, host of My Simplified Life, the CEO and founder of the MLG Collective and author of How to Get on Podcasts. And then you go find every podcast episode you've been on and there's three buttons. You click on the three buttons and it says add to playlist and you add it to your interview playlist. So it's all in one spot. Then that playlist, you can also share. You can put it in your LinkedIn profile. So if your current job is author, there is a spot in your job description that says add media and you click on the add media and you embed your podcast playlist you can take that and embed it onto your website. So if you have a media press page, which we know you all do because you should, mm -hmm. you can embed the podcast player there. And so the great part about this is that you don't have to keep adding to your web page on the, the media press page that you've been on this podcast, been on this one, because it's automatically updating as you add it to your Spotify playlist. You should still do show notes on the side or um, instead of show notes, a blog post. But this part is going to automatically update every time you add to your playlist. Wow. Okay. So the other thing I've been encouraging guests to do is do the same thing, but over on YouTube. If your podcast episode shows up on YouTube, create a playlist there. And then even if you don't have a podcast, you can turn that playlist into a quote unquote podcast within YouTube, which then goes to YouTube music and allows people to have you on their YouTube music app outside of being in front of a computer screen. They can get all of your episodes that are released via YouTube. So you now can you've also just have added a playlist to my to-do list. <laughs> you have a playlist there as well. Same process, yeah. just on YouTube, right? And then yep. the other beautiful thing there on YouTube is go into the episode where you and I are here together, go into the transcript and download the transcript. Those are yes. your words where you're answering questions, which could be the springboard for social media content, yes. could be the springboard to the next chapter of your next book, because you're going to say things in our conversation that you might not normally think to record on your own. Exactly. Because we're going to go down a path and you're like, you know what, I've never talked about this to my community before. Exactly. And Grab we do this for content. clients too. We, we provide yeah. them with a transcript of every interview. And if it's not on YouTube, because not everything will be on YouTube or Spotify, you can go to player.fm and download the audio to upload to a transcript. Yeah. So you can do that as well. And we highlight the quotes that we feel are worthy of turning into social media posts. Another way to Smart. thank the host while elevating yourself as the thought leader that you are. It it seems like it's self promotion, and I get that many people are like, I don't want to promote myself, but isn't that what social media is supposed to be? You know, you want that platform, so why not give that extra education and knowledge that you've shared on a podcast to your social media followers? It's yeah. not self promotion if you're not trying to sell something and be icky about it. Just share your words, and then it's not self promotion. I don't think it doesn't have to be I gross. It. I love it. Okay, so. Where did the idea come from to actually pen the book, write the book? Where, where, what was the, the, the little poke that you got on the shoulder that went, you need to write this, Michelle? I've, all, I'm, I've always been an avid reader. I love books. My most cherished, pos cherished possessions <laughs> are, are autographed books. I, I have a bookshelf of them. I've started collecting them for my kids. Uh, whenever an author comes to school, I'm like, yes, you, we will pay extra for the autographed book. Uh, I love them. And I interviewed a book coach on my show. And I said, you know, I really want to write a book. But I don't know uh, where do you even start. I don't know what I would write on. 
And she said, well, your first book has to be on what you know and what you're known for. And I said, oh, so this podcast pitching. Okay. And I literally from that moment started outlining my chapters and what are the steps that I'm going to take to pitch someone. I'm going to write it all down. And that was really where it started. I hired a book coach for three months and said, I just want to get this proposal, the first two chapters out, you know, that that's how long we're going to work together and then finish the book on my own. And I did it. Wow. Okay. So what was the length of time then total? From beginning, I started December of 2021 with the book Mm. coach, and the book came out January 2024. Wow, good. Now, how are you different as an author now? Before and now that you have this book in the world, how are you a different person? I'm the same person, but I have Mm. a lot more empathy for every author who's gone through (laughs) the publishing process. (laughs) It it was it was a journey. I I published with McGraw Hill. They closed the business division down in December. They laid off my editor and her department in June. And my agent had actually left the agency to go work at a publisher. So I lost my entire team along the way. (laughs) So I I completely empathize with anyone who's had to publish a book. It is an island of one. (laughs) Okay, I have a question. Did you hire yourself to get onto my podcast? I wanted to know. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted yeah. to know. Yes. Well, I, I, I guess I hired myself. Um, I have a teammate, Allison, that you know. Good. Yes, uh, yes. And so she helps me with the pitching, and she pitched me to you. Uh, yes. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Oh, okay, I love how this, all this works. Um, okay, so what is your big hope for the book? Who? What are you hoping when somebody grabs a copy of this? Well, again, I'm loving the audio book. I just love having you in my ears as I'm doing something. It's amazing. And you did a great job on it, by the way. Thank you. Um, what is the big hope? What is your big wish for this book as people consume it and listen and read? What are you hoping for people to pull out of this? It's really twofold. First, I, I want everybody to know how to pitch themselves, to do it properly, and to know that they can do it. You know, there there are people who hire me who will still hire me because it is time intensive. But I want people who don't know what the exact process is to be able to follow it and to also then create industry standards in an industry that has no standards as the wild, Mm -hmm. wild west. I don't want copy and paste to be the accepted way of pitching to a podcast. It should be personalized and we should, you know, take a stance of this is how a professional is going to do it and this is what we accept. The other part that I really hope is that more people share their stories and themselves with the rest of us, because I feel in hearing the stories of what someone's gone through, what steps they've taken to become successful in whatever they can do, it really provides that motivation, inspiration, encouragement, and education, ultimately, for the rest of us who are listening to know that we're not alone. We can do it. You've been through it. I can get through it you know, that maybe something that I haven't tried that you've tried, maybe I should do that too. And for us to really just come together more collectively. And I I like to say that we're changing the world one voice at a time with podcasts, because I feel if we did sit down and just listen to the stories of others, then we would have a better world. We'd have a better understanding of what somebody has gone through. And so that is my hope that the book, it, it sounds very profound and deep. And yet that is really what I hope that, you know, it does for people. Yeah. Because, okay, as a podcast host, we get some pretty interesting emails from (laughs) people who don't do their research like you do. Um, I've had people call me Sheila. I've (laughs) I've been called Amy. Um, Amy, I love your podcast, Living the Next Chapter. It's amazing. And I'm like, who the heck is Amy? It's just me. I'm the only person here. (laughs) Um, Or... You know, oh, love your podcast. I have a perfect guest for you for your author podcast. Um, my guest has a company that does office supply. <laughs> Crickets. I'm like, office supply? I'm like, and I'll email them back. Do they have a book? No, 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 no. They just want to come on and talk about how they grew their business. I'm like, do you know that it's an author podcast? I'm here to talk right. to authors and talk about writing a book. And that has nothing to do with my show. And you can tell it's just kind of a spray and pray type thing. Right. If I hit enough emails, somebody's going to respond. But at least get the name of the host right. I think that would be one thing. I would say for anybody other pitching, you might want to just. It's in the show description everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Any directory, there's the name. What pains me is that somebody paid this person to do this job. 
Right. That's somebody is spending their money to have mm-hmm. you reach out to them, use the wrong name, copy and paste a pitch, send it to podcasts that have nothing to do with what your client is needing to do. Okay. Yes. It, 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 it's it really it, it, it angers me. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yes, I could go on and on. <laughs> Okay, so for an, a new author, I love the fact that you mentioned that you should be promoting your your book even in the early days of writing. Don't wait till it's done yeah. and you have a box of them on your kitchen table. That's not the time to start promoting your book. You need to start now building community ahead of the release of the book. That's great. That's a good idea. Um, but for a new author that's writing or out there promoting their book, what kind of things, what kind of questions do you ask a new author when they come to sit down with you? You mentioned before we jumped on today, you're just talking with a potential new client. Uh-huh. So what are some of the kind of the questions that when you meet somebody as an author, first time, what are some of the things you want to know about them? Uh, what is their book about? Who are they trying to reach? Who are their ideal readers? Because like I also mentioned to you, I have authors who, you know, I want to be on all the literary podcasts and I go, but it's a beach read. So are all of the authors that are listening to these podcasts wanting to read the beach read? No, let's reach the people who read the beach reads. So, you know, who, who is it you want to target? Uh, how did you come up with the book? What is it in your life? This is my favorite question to ask a, a novelist is what in your real life did you put in the book? That you Ooh. can share with us. Oh. I want to know what's real and what's, you know, not. And that, at least to the point where you can share that. But, you know, when you get to know an author and whether that's through an interview or off on the side when I'm doing a one-on-one, you get to know their personality. And I have one, uh, you know, Mary Carol Moore. I think you yeah. interviewed her. Yeah. So having worked with Mary now on her second book launch, I've gotten to know her life's journey. And so in her second book that that's coming out soon, I was like, oh, you wrote this part about this character being an artist because you're an artist. Oh, you did this and you went diving here. And that's why this the book takes place here. And so you get to know right away what's fact versus what's fiction when you get to hear from these authors. So I ask these questions up front because otherwise, you know, you, you really need to get to know them to figure that one out. But that's what podcast interviews let us do. So yeah. I do ask those kinds of questions from clients of, you know, what, what is it or what's your goal in writing these books? You know, is this your career or is this something that you're doing on the side? Just as you asked me, you know, what what's the, the purpose of having this book out there? What do I want it to come from it? So those are the yeah. types of questions that I ask them. What kind of questions do authors have for you about being a guest on a podcast? What what are they saying to you? Like, I'm nervous. I've never done this before. I don't know technology. I don't even listen to podcasts. And you're telling me, Michelle, that I have to be a guest? I have no sweet clue about any of this stuff. What kind of questions are they asking you? All of those. Uh, yeah. So I, I provide every client with a microphone so that they can show up in the right way along with a guide on how to be a great guest and turning their phones into airplane mode, having headphones on, all of those things. I provide them so they don't have to ask or if they do ask, here's the guide, here are all the answers. But I also tell them to just treat it like you're having a cup of coffee with a new friend yeah. and to be as you know normal and engaging and conversational and just share of themselves. Uh, because I get a lot of, you know, I'm an introvert and how do I you know go with that? Uh, and that's what I say is just it's you're just having coffee with another human being. Don't think yeah. about the thousands that will listen down the road. Just focus on the person that's right in front of you. And that really alleviates everything that you could worry about. You won't say the wrong thing. If you need to pause, say that you need to pause because yeah. in the end, we're all human beings. And, you know, I think people respect that even more if you can go, you know what? I need to take a moment because <laughs> I'm just I'm talking too fast and I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah, it, it's simply being you and and that I hate the word authentic, but by just showing up and saying that and, you know, you're being honest, then you're, you're being authentic. Yeah. One tip I have for guests that ask me for feedback when we're done recording, which is a unique thing to ask, you mm-hmm. know, hey, Dave, can you give me any pointers for my next interview? Thank you for having me on your show. I'm like, well, that's an interesting question. I'll get that very often. But one thing I say to, to guests is, Again, to your point, listen, maybe listen to the show ahead of time. Get a feeling for the the tone of the show. Is mm-hmm. it super serious NPR, kind of very well-worded and very well-edited? Or is it kind of just a 
conversation, free and open, and we kind of go anywhere. Like, how how does the show feel like to listen to? And then pick up on if the the host of the show has an endearing term for their audience mm. that listen to the show. So if I was if I was on the Taylor Swift podcast, which I don't know why there isn't a Taylor Swift podcast, <laughs> Swift, let's go. Um, but she has her her, her, her community or Swifties, Swifties, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if I come on and Taylor has me as a guest, because obviously I would be a guest of on course. the Taylor Swift podcast. Why not? That's a, yeah. that's, that's a given. Yeah. That's a given. Yeah. I would come on and be like, hey, Taylor, so glad to be on your show. And to the Swifties listening, I'm so glad to be here with you. I can't believe I'm here talking to one of my favorite artists, Taylor Swift. Swifties, unite. Let's go. Right. <laughs> And yeah. Taylor would be like, wait a minute, this guest just acknowledged my entire audience and now joined them as part of my community and is now on my show. Instead yeah. of ignoring the audience and not even referencing them as a guest. And I just want to tell you about my book. I just right. want to focus on this. There's a whole group of people here listening. Mm-hmm. And how do we bring them into the conversation, even as a guest? I love it. And there's one really good podcast that I love. If you ever get a chance to hear it, it's the Mel Robbins podcast. Yes. And on Mel's podcast, so if you were a guest, Michelle, Mel would be talking to you. You say something like, obviously, you're going to say something full of gold and value. Obviously, yes. (laughs) Mel, Mel pauses you like she hits pause on you and she turns her attention to the audience and goes, okay, did you just hear what Michelle said? That was such an important point. And I want you just to take a moment to think about that because Michelle's here and she's just giving so much value. And that point was what I just, I want to just call that out because that was gold. Michelle, back to you. And in that moment, you're waiting while Mel talks to the audience and then she comes back to you. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that's right. There's someone here listening. I almost forgot because I'm so focused on you as a host that I almost ignore the listener. And it's you also your cue for later in. of make sure you grab that part because you should reuse it. <laughs> right? It's a good signal. But I, I love how she l- directs her attention to the listener and comes back. So if you can do that as a guest, especially if you kind of picked up on a an enduring, enduring term that mm-hmm. the host calls their audience, then use that term and say, you know, being on this podcast with Michelle today is great. I have a special gift for your audience. For you that's listening and you're Swifties, come over to my, come over to my, and use the, the line Swifties and yeah. you can get a free whatever. Right. Cause now you're like, oh, you're part of the community. That's right. It's such a great connection point for I you. I love as a that. Guest. Yeah. That's a great right? tip. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Um, okay. So we get on a podcast, we show up, we record, we leave. We create our Spotify playlist, our YouTube playlist, and then what? Like, my biggest problem as a podcast host is with this show, I've got 370 episodes in three years. I'm doing three a week, just out the door, out the door. Like, great, amazing people have come through the door. As a host, I want to keep that connection with my guests alive. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to end. Like, it's very transactional in podcasting. Mm -hmm. I come on as a guest. I leave. I go to another podcast. I leave. But that ongoing relationship with a host, is there anything that we as hosts can do or we as guests can do to keep that relationship? I've had so many great conversations that I don't want to just let them go into the ether and just never reference them again. I I really want to keep that bridge because we've spent so much time together. What is what is your suggestion? Well, I think for for both the host and the guest, it comes down to repurposing that interview. And by tagging each other and reconnecting that way, you get more longevity out of it. Because if you're doing three shows a week, you know, there's only so many days that you can post content. And if somebody just starts listening now, there's 330, what, seven yeah, episodes yeah. before <laughs> that yeah. maybe they haven't heard. And you can always pull back and say, you remember that episode number 52 and go back to that. And then people will want to go back to it. And the same goes for a guest. You know, um, there was actually, there's a lot of controversy over guests not sharing their interviews and it goes, you know, way up to celebrities who don't share it. And that it, the armchair um, expert, Dax Shepard has complained about it. And, So if celebrities aren't doing it, then obviously, you know, the everyday people aren't doing it either. And I saw one host say that she's going to start putting in her 
agreements to guests that if they don't post about it within 30 days, she's deleting their episode. Oh, wow. And part of me gets it, but I also don't get it. And I I was going back and forth on whether or not I comment last night because when you're an author in the middle of a book launch and you have all of these episodes going live, again, you only have so many days to post it. And you don't really want to post Every single day I was on this show, I was on this show, I was on this show, because now we're getting into the self-promotion and you're like, this is gross and this is all you're doing versus what else are you giving your audience? Mm -hmm. So I feel like 30 days, yeah, you probably should have posted something somewhere, but how much greater is it that in two months from now, you pull out one of those quotes that you did from two months ago and now you're posting it. So then you perpetuate the lifespan of that podcast episode. And we can do it on both ends. You know, there's so many people who say, I don't have enough content. It takes so much to to generate content for social media. If you're a podcast host, you have so much content that you can Mm. post every day for every episode that goes way back into the archives. I have 220 today, 224 episodes. I guarantee you people have not listened to episode number seven. You know, so go back and pull from them, remind them who you've had on, tag that person because they're going to share it too. And that also then strengthens your relationship of, oh, you know what? I meant to check back in with you and see how you're doing. I really enjoyed you know, being on your show or having you as a guest. And what are you up to now? And maybe reconnecting in that kind of a way to keep that relationship alive so it doesn't feel so transactional. Hmm. Nice. And what I like to do as well is I go into... The on Amazon because I buy books from my guests because I want to support them. They all, sometimes they offer, which is kind, but sometimes they're in New Zealand and the shipping costs are insane yeah. to give me the book. So I, even if they do offer, I, I like to tell them that my audience is kind and generous and they donate to the show. So what I'd rather do is take that money and buy your book so I can give you a verified review mm. for your book instead yeah. of just a review. It says a little more waiting on Amazon, for example. Right. And then I put in the in the comments, you know, if you want to hear more about my time talking with Michelle about this book that I'm leaving you a review on, come to episode 35 and you can hear her talk more about the book. Exactly. Right. So it's right yep. in the review, yep. which then people are like, wait a minute, the book that I'm thinking about buying, I can hear Michelle talk about? Exactly. I love that. Wow. Yes, and you can it's do it a on Goodreads too. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. leave that leave that review again. A good review, not great book, great author. Those no, no, no. But like a detailed <laughs> review. Yeah, and and use that, and then just make a little mention. You don't have to do links or anything. Just living the next chapter, episode thirty five. Come yeah. and listen to Michelle. You know, it's like oh, that's unique. That's different. You don't see that in the other comments. So. No, I love that. That's a great idea. I, you, where were you when I was writing my book? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here and I'm learning because you're, you're teaching have a me version so much. Two of there how to get go. on podcasts. <laughs> two point I love it. Um, okay, so Michelle, the book is available everywhere. Everywhere. Right? Yep. And the audio book is spectacular. Thank you. Um, a little behind the scenes you shared with me. Uh, tell me, uh, recording an audio book for an author that's like, I don't even know if I want to do this. Like, I'm not really good with a mic and uh, technology is not my friend. The, the the benefit of having an audiobook. Preach, tell us what like what what are you seeing as a result of having this audiobook? I I, I absolutely love it. Um, I love the experience. I felt that especially since I'm a podcast host, the book is about podcasts. I kind of had to be the voice of it, but I did have to fight for that. I had to even audition for it. Uh, so it was in my contract Wait, that... <laughs> really? Yes. For your own book? For my own book, yes, yes. Uh, apparently not everybody's cut out to read their own books. Um, mm. Even if you have 224 episodes under your belt, you still have to send in an audition tape. <laughs> Oh, blowing my mind right now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I, I flew down to LA and I did it and I, I had an absolute blast doing it, getting to really, I, I hope that my personality comes out in the way I've written the book. So to be able for you to hear me read the words that I've written should really tell you who I am and, and put myself as the, you know, the author of these words and, and to let you get to know me on an even deeper level. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I loved it. I don't know that everybody 
loves to listen to themselves. And I don't listen to myself, but I have listened to the five minute um, sample on Amazon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and I went, oh, OK, that, that that's not bad. Uh, <laughs> we are nice. our own worst critics. But I, I think an audiobook is great because there are so many people who prefer to listen you know, versus reading um, versus the hardback versus the Kindle, yeah. you know, all of the different choices that we have. The feedback I've gotten is that uh, people who buy the audiobook go out and then buy the hardcover because they want to take notes. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the one difference that, that I, I've heard from many people of, okay, I bought it, but now I'm going to buy the other one. So I appreciate that. That helps sales. Yeah. <laughs> and you sell it twice, which is yes, great. Yes, yeah. <laughs> good. It's very good. Um, okay, so is there links to the book on your website as well? There is, we yes. There? Okay. Yes, on michelleglogovac.com and on the mlgcollective.com. You'll see at the top in the menu how to get on podcasts, and you can click there, get to the book site, get to all of the different links of where the book is sold, bookshop.org, Books A Million, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, all of the places. Uh, and I am working on wrapping up a course that is how to get on podcast, the course. So you can have more video time of me. <laughs> nice. Yes. So that hopefully that'll come out. What's today's date? I'm, I'm trying to get out as quickly as possible. <laughs> the worksheets are done. I need to do the video parts, but All right. in the next few weeks in April. Good. Amazing. And then the podcast. Yes. My Talk simple about that life. a little bit. Let's go. Yeah, it is all about how your past and your present don't define your future. You do. And every guest, including myself, have all had a pivot somewhere along the way where we've all had career changes. Things have happened in life. We've discovered what we feel are our purpose or our passion. And so we talk about all that. I talk to authors and how they've written their book. I get the truth of what's really not fiction in those fiction books and, you know, what their processes look like. I talk to business owners and, and what they do, how they came up with their business idea. You know, did they fall into it or take years to build? Was it a side hustle? All of those things, because I feel that wherever you are today, if you don't like it, you have the power to change that tomorrow. And whether that's small steps or one giant step, it's completely up to you. You are in charge of what happens next. Mm, I love it. Okay. Um, so all the information will be in the show notes, as always. This, that's what we do. And um, I would encourage everybody to go get the book, especially if you're an author in the early days of writing. You need to have this in, on your desk beside you as you write so that you know how to plan to launch your book and do it the right way and to get on podcasts. But then as well, if you're looking for someone who can help you, and from a podcaster's point of view, someone who cares enough to research the show and the host, which I feel a little weird that you researched me, but <laughs> Google, I'm happy. I'm glad we still are friends. So that's a good sign. Um, but if you're looking for somebody who's in your corner that wants to help you promote your book and get out there, get you past the nerves, get you on to a podcast. Michelle's great. Her team is great. And she's got great resources for you. So We'll have links for all that stuff in the show notes, as always. And Michelle, any parting words for a new author, an author that wants to work with you? What do they need? What, what do they have to do? Like, what, what do you want to what do you want to say to them? Get your story out there. Don't be afraid, okay. because we do want to hear your story. We, it's very important that we get to connect with you, the person who is behind these books and not just the characters that are in them. But to really to get to know you, because we want to fall in love with you so we can fall in love with your books and your writing and, you know, to hear your voice because you are celebrities to all of us readers. We just don't get to see you on TV and recognize you on the street. So yeah. let us get to know you because it's it's a gift and, and we appreciate you. It's amazing. Awesome. Everybody, all the information is always in the show notes. And uh, reach out to Michelle and hire her. Like, go work with this person. She's amazing. And then, again, get all the resources that are there for you. And uh, listen to her podcast. You know, there's a lot of homework for everybody to do, but I know you can do this. You do hard things. And Michelle's there to help you. So, Michelle, again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for listening all the way to the end of the podcast. That's a big signal to all of the players, the YouTubes, the Apples, the Spotify's, that you found value in this episode of Living the Next Chapter, just by you listening to the end. You just sent a huge bat signal out to the app saying this was a great podcast, a great conversation. So you listening to this point, you've done your job. I have one more ask of you. If you know anyone, anyone that would benefit from this conversation, 
would you share this episode with them? Would you just get on, send them a message, send them the episode, tell them about this episode, tell them to a living in the next chapter.com to get all the information about the podcast. Can you do that for me? Because the more people that hear this message, this episode, the better. I want to support these amazing authors. And I know you do as well. So sharing this episode really helps. And I appreciate you. See you on the next episode. And thank you for listening to Living the Next Chapter.